the end of the Stone Age hunter-gatherers started 3,000 years earlier, far away in the Middle East. The Jordan Valley is one of the driest places on Earth. Here, 6,000 years ago, was the extraordinary town of Talilat Rasul. This one area was the birthplace of key ideas that would eventually take Western civilization beyond the Stone Age. What made the way of life in this area so special? And why was it so creative? The Rasulians had placed themselves directly on a major trade route. It linked two great emerging powers, the Sumerians on the Euphrates and the Egyptians on the Nile. Rasul and its world is a lifetime's passion for archaeologist Stephen Burke. He's been digging the Jordan Valley for the last 20 years. He's looking for evidence of something very unusual, a complex Stone Age economy. What we have here is an, a, what seems pretty likely to be an olive plantation. And I mean, the excavations showed us the remains of houses, storerooms, grindstones, and an analysis of the material from the area pretty clearly 90% of it or more is the remains of olives, smashed up olive pips, pieces of olive, uh, and what it seems to be fairly clearly is an olive oil processing station or indeed an olive processing station and we're probably looking at a grove here of olives all the way up the side of the hill. Burke believes the cultivation of olives was the crucial spark for growth. Once, a network of olive groves and fields for crops spread out many kilometers from Rasul, across the hills, and into the valley. We could say that these people are the first great horticulturalists. Not only are they developing olive, they're developing date, and they're developing fig. These are the first great tree farmers in history. These pioneering orchardists kept the town going for 1,500 years of cultivation and trade. And they left large amounts of rubbish. No, 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 no. It's all Burke and his team needs to reconstruct their way of life. At its peak, Rasul was home to thousands of people. This was a big town for the time. To visitors, it must have been the height of sophistication. Its crowded streets bustled with life and new colour, a place of energy and ideas. Imports came from as far away as Yemen in the south and Afghanistan in the east. Sensual luxuries like perfume and lapis lazuli. You could show people your wealth. This was a place where you could get ahead, become a person of means. The goods leaving Rasul were the mass-produced staple commodities like olives, salt, and lentils. Olive oil was squeezed for all it was worth, used for everything from cooking to lighting the lamps at night. It was the liquid gold of the Middle East. We're talking hundreds of litres of oil. We're not talking little thimblefuls, we're not talking tiny vesselfuls, we're talking industrial-sized vats of oil. 